Greetings, and welcome to episode 46. In today's episode, we will be discussing Do unto others. How do you want to be treated? Ah, this episode is inspired by a conversation I had with my daughter. Anyway, if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, to do unto others. What does that mean? The full saying is, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But still, begs the question, what does that mean? It means, if you would like respect, give respect. If you would like kindness, give kindness. Whatever energy you would like to receive, put that energy out there. If you go around putting out negative energy, it's more than likely that you're going to get negative energy in return. You cannot expect people to give out positive energy if you're giving out mostly negative energy. Life just does not work that way. Now, there are exceptions to every rule. There are those that live by a strict rule of those that need the positive energy the most will be the ones giving off the negative energy. And on the flip side of that, there are those that no matter what kind of energy you put out, they're going to give you negative energy. But as it concerns just the basic rule of thumb, what you put out is what you're going to get back. If I treat everyone with kindness and respect, more times than not, I'm going to say, go on, I'm going to go out on a limb and say 99% of the time, I'm going to get positive energy back. Oh, excuse me. Likewise, if I go around putting out negative energy, 99% of the time, I'm going to get negative energy back. I'm going to get a negative response of some sort. <clears throat> and this, this, this plays through every aspect of life. Friendship and personal relationships, working relationships, uh, familiar relationships, even relationships with uh, people you would consider acquaintances, people you don't come in contact with that often. These relationships require maintenance and usually that maintenance requires that you treat these people with a certain level of respect. Sometimes what goes along with that is loyalty or some type of adoration of some sort. But the, the main point is the maintenance, the doing to others as you would have them do unto you. Treating someone with respect, treating someone as though you would like respect in return, or any type of positive energy, kindness, what have you. When you go around and treat people as though they're there to make you happy, they tend to not want to be around you. And some people would take that as a sign that, well, that person just they're just stuck up. Well, no, they're not stuck up. Look at how you're treating them. Are you treating them the way you want to be treated? Do you want to be treated as though you're only there to make them happy? If that's the case, then by all means, keep treating them that way. But if you would like to be treated as though you're maybe not an integral part of their life, but you bring some type of positive energy or positive function to their life, then you need to treat people that way. Uh, the conversation I was having with my daughter was based on pretty much how she tr treats people and how she expects to be treated in return. But she doesn't give fairly. She doesn't treat people the way she expects to be treated. She treats people as though they're beneath her. And 
I'm trying to teach her that that's just not how you treat people. You have to come at them from a point of, this is what I expect from you. And then shower them with kindness. <laughs> the same thing you would like in return. The spice of life, you come to find out when you get older, isn't so much having people do nice things for you, but it's doing nice things for others. Because it feels good. And it makes them feel good. And if it makes them feel good, they're probably going to expend an equal amount of energy trying to make you feel good. Even if it's not doing nice things, they'll just be a positive source of energy for you. That's usually how it works. Usually. Like I keep saying, there's exceptions to every rule. Sometimes you're, you're, not, you're just not going to get what you put out there. You're just not. Some people just don't work that way. But I wonder, it makes me wonder if that wasn't a problem from childhood that nobody just put the clamps down on early to get them to say, hey, maybe you should change the way you're doing it because it's having a negative effect. And so I'm trying to put clamps down on it early so that it doesn't grow into a teenage problem, so it doesn't grow into a young adult problem or an adult problem. Because if it's not nipped in the bud now and becomes a, a lifelong process, then whoever's giving out the negative energy is going to have a very, very, very miserable life because they're going to be working under the assumption that nobody likes them, but they're not going to be paying attention to their own actions. And that is the key to do unto others. If you would like people to be nice and kind, and show respect, then you have to be nice and kind and show respect. If it doesn't bother you one way or the other, by all means, act any way you like. But you cannot then complain when you're getting back exactly what you're giving. Or when somebody calls you out on it. Because when somebody calls you out on your behavior, it's not just a random event that they just feel like saying something mean to you. They're calling you out on your bad behavior. And there were several instances where I warned my daughter about the consequences of treating people negatively. And she didn't listen. And one of her friends decided to not hang out with her anymore. Now, it is my understanding that this friend now wants to hang back out with her, but it was the initial effect that it had, that her treatment of this friend had. And I keep trying to warn her. It wasn't just randomly. She didn't just randomly say, I don't want to hang out with you. It was specifically based on the treatment of that friend. And if you catch this early... and correct correct the problem then it's no longer a problem and like I said some people will never give you the response you're looking for you put out all the positive energy in the world and they're just going to be negative but if you are in control of your input you don't need to be in control of theirs you don't need to worry about well they were mean to me that doesn't make any difference. Two wrongs don't make a right. You be the positive influence. And just because this one person doesn't accept it, move on to the next person. The next person will probably accept it. Because I found, like I said, 99% of the time, when you're putting out positive energy, that's what you get back. And also bear in mind, there's body language. There's inflection when we speak. So you could be saying something that the words are pretty, but if you use the wrong inflection or the wrong body language while speaking those words, it'll still come off as negative. And then that's going to be what you get back is negativity because people see the body language and they hear the inflection in the voice. And It takes very little understanding to treat people better. You just have to have a little bit of empathy. 
And what that means is to understand that however you feel, the person you're in contact with has felt that way before. Whatever you're going through, it's a very good possibility that whoever you're in contact with has gone through that before or could be going through it now. So you cannot just speak to them from a point where well, you don't know what's going on in my life or you couldn't possibly understand. Well, did you ever ask them? Probably not. So work under the assumption that they understand what you're going through and treat them as though you understand they've gone through it too. A person is a person. A person isn't just what you see of them. And I think that's probably the, the, the problem. People see cashier or people see homeless person. They don't see Bob or Steve or John. And like I was telling my daughter earlier, you see mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and sister. You see, and, you, and you, you, your judgment of these people is based on what they do for you or what they can do for you or what you think they're supposed to do for you. You don't see them as who they really are. You see them as the projection you put onto them. That they are, in fact, people. That they are, they have, in fact, been through the very things you're going through right now. And they have felt the very way you're feeling right now. And if you actually gave them the opportunity to speak with them and find these things out, you would notice that, wow, we have a lot more in common on that emotional level. Maybe I'm just looking at it wrong. When you get to know someone on an emotional level, your, your view of them changes. When you only know someone on a, like a, a, a name basis, I know, I know so and so, but you've never took the time to actually get to know them on an emotional level, then you, you're not seeing the whole person in that instance. And then you're only working under the, you're working under the assumption that they perhaps have been through the same things you've been through. When I meet somebody, I work under the, under the assumption that they have been through, if not exactly what I've been through, they've been through enough of what I've been through to be able to relate. So I don't come at them like they've never been through anything or that they don't feel ever. Just because they're not showing me that kind of emotion, I come at them as though the same things that hurt me hurt them. So I don't do the things that would hurt me to them. And they do the same. People, people forget this stuff sometimes. Like when you're having a bad day or you're in a bad mood. But just because someone forgets it once or twice or has a bad day or is in a bad mood doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad person. We're all entitled to our bad moments. All of us. Because we're all going to have them. Sometimes we forget our place is not a position of utmost suffering. I have not I have yet to meet a person that's in a position of utmost suffering. And I've heard some pretty bad stories. We're not in a war torn country. None of us none no one that I've met is starving to the point of malnutrition and almost death. So no one that I've met personally is in a position of utmost suffering. So there's no one that you're probably going to meet that cannot relate to you and empathize in some way, shape, or form on an emotional level. But the minute you decide that you're not going to come at these people on an emotional level, that's when you decide that they're not worth the effort. I'm not going to empathize with these people because for whatever reason, and so then you put yourself in a position of, of being better than them because you don't see them as an emotional creature. You just see them as a creature, and creatures don't get treated very well. Now, you see someone as an emotional being, they're going to get treated a little bit better. That's why we treat our spouses, children, family members better than we treat everybody else because we know that they're emotional creatures. 
but likewise, we still have a tendency to, in certain instances, treat the family and super close friends a little bit worse because we know we're uh, in a position that we're going to get forgiven more readily than if it were a stranger. So it's kind of a double-edged sword on that one. <laughs> I personally believe that if you love someone and you care about someone, they should be treated better than anybody else on the street. If you're out in the world treating strangers better than you treat your family or friends or close friends, I think there's something wrong with that. Because nobody is guaranteed to forgive you. You should treat everyone the way you would like to be treated. Just because. Just because you know you want that. And if you have the slightest shred of empathy, you know you know how they would feel. You know exactly how they would feel if you say something mean or if you become disrespectful. Because you know how it feels. And if you work under the assumption that they know how it feels, try it. Just be nice. Even try it to someone that's given you negativity. At some point in their life, they have had good emotions poured on at some point. So do that. He comes up or she comes up and she's being mean and negative to you. Try to be understanding. I see that you're having a bad day. Would you like to talk about it? See how they react. And I'm not saying that I do that all the time, but I have done it. It doesn't always work, but sometimes, sometimes you get an apology and they'll start telling you, oh yeah, well I just had a really bad string of days or really bad luck today. or And they'll tell you. And you, then you get an understanding for what they're going through in this minute right now. And then you giving what you would like to receive, you end up receiving it even though the initial contact was negative. And like I said, exceptions to every rule, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes you... Ooh. <coughs> ooh, ooh, excuse me. Sometimes you will pour on the positive energy and they'll just pour on more negative energy. Like I said, there are exceptions to every rule. Some people, that's what they want to do is be negative. Because they want to give you a reason to be negative, so they have a more of a reason to be negative. Because <laughs> humans are crazy, that's why. <laughs> but for the most part, positive energy attracts positive energy in the immediate sense. In other words, if I say, boom, positive energy, I want your respect, or I want to respect you, I want to... Uh, empathize with you, I want to have compassion with you, you get that in return. In varying degrees, I mean it's not always equal portions, you get you give a hundred percent, you get a hundred percent, but in my opinion, if I'm giving a hundred percent and I get five percent back, that's cool. It's better than being, you know, spewed negativity all over me. Excuse me. All it takes is the slightest little bit of empathy. You don't have to feel what they're feeling. You just have to understand that they feel. And that they f probably feel the same way you do when they are approached negatively. And if you can understand that they don't like being approached negatively, then maybe you should understand to not approach them negatively. It's, it's just that simple. You really, you can't have it both ways. You cannot come at someone negatively and expect positive energy. Sometimes that happens. It doesn't happen all the time. And then there's the people that are negative because it gives them a power trip. And then as soon as they assert their dominance through their negativity, then they'll start being nice. Not necessarily positive, but they'll start being nice. <clears throat> the, 
that is still negativity. And if you come at this person, this type of person with with positive energy, they're still going to try and insert, uh, insert, and they're still going to try and assert their dominance. Now, if they come at someone like me with that, I'm human, and I don't mind suffering with other people, <laughs> especially to those that use negativity to assert dominance. So when they assert their dominance, I use negativity to stop that where it stands, or where it sits, or where whatever, and let them know that you know that's not the way to get through to me. If you're going to uh, use negativity to assert dominance, I'm going to use negativity to let you know that that doesn't work. And then after they back off, then I'll back off. But that is a, an immediate reaction and an immediate uh, uh, representation of getting what you give. He gives me negativity, I give it right back. And then he steps back and gives positive energy and tries that route. And then... I meet him halfway. That is the the ultimate representation of give and take in that moment. Get, giving what you get, <laughs> doing unto others. He did unto me. I did right back in the same fashion. He didn't like that, so he steps back. He he realizes that's not going to work because people that do that realize that that doesn't work in every instance. But if he had come at me, say, with a smile on his face, and, hey, how you doing today? And blah, 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 blah. There's all different kind of ways to assert dominance. And I may not let you assert your dominance on me, but if you're doing it from a positive energy standpoint, I'm going to still stop you, but I'm going to use equally as positive energy. Because that's how you came at me. You had an, at least enough respect to not try to piss me off instantly. <laughs> so I'm going to come at you with similar respect to let you know that that's not going to fly. But I respect that you had respect for me in that instance. So when you think about it, I mean, think back. Think back to just the interactions you've had over the past week. Did you do everything in your power to avoid negative situations? To be the positive influence in that situation? I'm not trying to say that, oh, I'm always the positive influence. No, no, no. Sometimes I can be downright shitty, and I'm going to be perfectly honest. But for the most part, I like to be that that positive energy because it, it feels good to me to say hey how you doing and mean it and then have them come back and it's it's a positive thing and and yeah we don't maybe know each other but we're going back and forth for a couple seconds and hey that was a good interaction that feels good and it doesn't cost you anything to be nice granted it doesn't cost you anything to be mean it could cost you a potential friendship, but it costs you absolutely nothing to be nice and respectful. It costs you nothing. A person being negative stands to lose a lot more than someone being positive. That's the same thing I tell people that, well, why do you live the way you do? Or, there is no God, why, why do you live the way you do? And I tell them, I put it this way, if you're wrong, you stand to lose everything. If I'm wrong, I lose nothing trying to be a better person than I was yesterday. I lose absolutely nothing. But if you're wrong, you lose everything. Choice is simple. <laughs> so I, I, I try to practice that in everything I do. I lose nothing trying to be nice to this person, but I could lose everything. It could. You don't know how quickly a situation could evolve. So I, I come at this person negatively, and next thing you know, it's fisticuffs. Next thing you know, one of us is dead. So now I've lost everything. I'm dead now because I was negative instead of positive. So you, you may not 
get killed. You may not, it may not even devolve into a fight, but you lost something in that moment by letting it devolve just by being negative when you could have been a positive influence in that moment. And it might not even be a stranger. It could be someone you've known and hung out with for years. And suddenly now you're not friends anymore because you used negative energy and, devol and let a situation devolve. Now, by no means be a pushover, but you can assert yourself in a situation without being negative. It's a fact. And I'm not talking about, well, I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. That has nothing to do with it. If you see someone in the wrong, by all means, call them out on it. Because if someone's in the wrong and nobody corrects them, they're just going to keep doing wrong. But I don't want to hurt their feelings. Sometimes that's what it takes. Do what you got to do. That's And I would expect the same thing. And so when that, that still falls under, do unto others. If I'm wrong, correct me. Because if I don't realize I'm doing wrong and nobody corrects me because nobody wants to hurt my feelings, then I'm going to keep going down the line and just being wrong. And nobody's going to correct me. So if you take the time to correct me, I deal with a little bit of embarrassment maybe. But I'm corrected. And I expect that from you because I would do it for you. And I'm, not, I'm I am worried about your hurt feelings. I am worried about you being embarrassed. But I'm more worried about you never being corrected. Well, it hurt their feelings. Well, you know, so be it. That sometimes that's how people learn. Sometimes that's how I've learned. I've learned that way before. Sometimes that's the only way to do it. You're doing it wrong. And granted, that's not the words you're going to use. You're doing it wrong, and suddenly they're hurt feelings and embarrassed, and but the, but it's dealt with. But on the same token, now don't be upset when you flip the script, and now they're calling you out on something you're doing wrong, and now you're hurt feelings and embarrassed. Doing to others. I mean, it's not just treatment of others. It's 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 almost every aspect. I expect to be corrected. I've been corrected every time I've ever been wrong in life. I expect to be corrected. Likewise, I expect that you expect to be corrected. Whether it's academics, uh, behavior, attitude, whatever. You know, I wouldn't want somebody to let me go around being wrong if they know better. And that likewise, I wouldn't let you go around being wrong if I know better. I guess at the root of doing to others is just be respectful of others. I said this before in another video, uh, basic human decency. If you can muster up basic human de decency, you're going to treat people with dignity and respect. And they're going to treat you likewise. 99% of the time, they're going to treat you likewise. And I can say 99% of the time because I've traveled all over this country. Literally all over this country. There's, I think there's one state I've never been to. I think it's North Dakota. As a, as a, as a truck driver, I've never been to Montana or North Dakota. But as a human being, I've been to every state in the connected 48 states, except for North Dakota. And 99% of the time, people respond favorably to positive energy. Likewise, 99% of the time, just coming back at someone with positive energy who initially used negative energy against you can dispel a bad situation. It's worked on me when I was in a bad mood or having a bad day and I came at someone negatively and they came at me positively. Boom. Instant clash of that energy and you instantly, as soon as the words leave your mouth, you feel like, ah, that was the wrong thing to say. And then they get an apology and suddenly you're chit chat. And so a negative situation was turned into a positive situation by someone taking the time to use positive energy. Probably because they see that, oh, this guy looks like he's having a rough day. 
and I'm not going to come at him negatively. Or maybe they just don't come at people negatively. Either way. So it's worked for me when I was the one that gave the positive energy to a negative person. And it's worked on me when I was the negative person. So I can say that with beyond the shadow of a doubt 99% of the time. <clears throat> but you're always going to meet that one person. But you'll see, you'll notice it's always that one person. Or that one type of person. <clears throat> That no matter what energy you use, they're going to come at you negatively because they they view themselves as above you no matter what. They'll never look at you from an emotional point of view because then that'll make you equals. And you can't do that. Once you understand someone from emotion from an emotional point of view, once you see a person as an emotional being it's impossible to pretend you're better than them. Impossible. And you know that negative person, when their tricks of trying to belittle you don't work, you know what they're thinking. You think you're better than me. And we all know the translation for that is, I think you're better than me. <laughs> So while they're thinking that you're better than them, they're going to be spewing more negativity because if they think you're better than them, then obviously you think you're better than them too. <laughs> Which is usually not the case. But yeah, this is something that needs to be dealt with in childhood. And not always. I mean, I took the long road and learned it the hard way, but I would like to, my daughter is 11, and I would like to have it nipped in the bud by the time she's 15. That way she's treating people with respect and kindness and, and empathizing with them so that she understands that, hey, they, they have the same feelings I do. They probably dislike the same things I dislike. And I don't mean, well, I don't like tomato doesn't mean they don't like tomato. What I mean is they don't like being hit, kicked, punched. They don't like people saying bad things to them because you know you don't like that stuff. So don't do it to them. But in my opinion, that's kind of a given. But my opinion is just an opinion. To me, it's common sense to not treat people badly. But I cannot tell you the exact moment when it became common sense and wasn't something I had to actually practice at. <laughs> anyway, we're getting on to the 30 minute mark, so I'm going to go ahead and call it. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. You can favorite it if you want. And please leave comments down below, as this is supposed to be a discussion. It's supposed to evolve into meaningful discussion. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you would like to keep coming back and getting more information, or you just like the sound of my voice, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But until next time, you hang in there. <laughs>